Hey, I'm Dero. Hey, I'm recording for Drag the Bar. Just going to jump right into this uh, episode and only wanted to show this hand to try and uh, sort of illustrate what, how the dynamic is going to develop now that we're four-handed. So I open ace four off from the cutoff and cal three bets from the small blind and I go ahead and fold. To basically our reverse implied odds are too bad here against an aggressive opponent um, and that's kind of all there is to it. It's not a bad spot to consider four bet bluffing since I do have an ace blocker and which blocks a lot of strong hand combinations and also if he tries to get tricky with uh, a pair of kings or queens then I do stand a chance to hit my three outs. And basically I just, uh, even though we have this sort of aggressive dynamic going, I don't feel quite ready or confident enough in my read to, to get involved in that. But what's advantageous here is that I can make it um, maybe 23, 24,000, something like that. Maybe that is even too big, but it makes it very difficult for him to then uh, to five bet block me um, any size. It'll be tough for him to make it any size where he's not committed. Uh, or, or at least, you know, is not putting in a third of his stack, which would generally make him committed, but of course if he's got uh, total rags, then putting in a third of your stack doesn't necessarily make you committed because you're not getting the right price to call uh, against somebody's potentially really strong range when you have uh, really trashy hands. Here I just fold to a button min raise. Don't mind defending here. Uh, I think it's if he's going to be min raising, I think I need to be defending a bit more. And I think folding to bigger raises is okay. But I do think you should one should be playing a few more hands from the blinds. And it, it's definitely you're at a bit of a disadvantage when you're calling with eight high out of the blinds. But I think you can compensate for that by trying to you know pay attention to board texture and. Uh, you know, start check raise bluffing some flops, leading some flops where you don't expect to get played back on, and sort of increase, uh, not necessarily increase, but maybe change the dynamic. It can You can set up more options to make different plays later and manipulate your image a little better. I think just generally trying to get involved, but, uh, and this is, as I've cited in the series, this is something different for my game now than before, and I wouldn't, you know, this is very close to the bottom of the range of hands I would defend. For example, like 7-8 suited, I would probably call here. I think it's too strong to fold. So 6-8 suited can't be that much different. But 8-5 suited, 6-4 uh, suited, those hands are definitely too weak. 7-5 suited, I think, pretty are too weak, uh, generally speaking. Here the claimer raises, and uh, I end up folding this hand, which is pretty standard. But I just wanted to show it because... The player in the small blind here is Sam CR. He's got about 40 big blinds. He's in third, and the claimer's got uh, almost 50 big blinds. In uh, or sorry, Sam's in fourth, and the claimer's in third. So there's potential for this sort of ICM exploitation here, where I can put some pressure on the claimer because Sam is potentially going to bust soon. The thing that makes that not so applicable here, I think, is that there's not a substantial difference in their chip stacks. Like the claimer isn't you know ultra close to getting third or better necessarily if if uh, Sam CR here had 12 big blinds or something like that and the claimer had 50 he'd have a lot more to lose but also given that our stacks are pretty even he can four bet bluff me with a uh, high frequency and also and if he suspects that I'm three if I'm trying to exploit the sort of concept he can easily four bet bluff me uh, or just try and take a pot after the you know take a flop and win the pot after the flop um, because I, I then have a lot to risk also, uh, whereas if I lose a big pot, then I'm uh, in sort of dire straits myself. But as it is, I just decided to fold here. I just wanted to go over that sort of hypothetical. Interesting and uh, kind of strange hand here that plays out. Sam opens the button. I fold my queen-jack offsuit. Uh, the claimer three bets in the big blind. I think this three bet is a little bit too small. Should definitely be going over two and a half x when you're out of position uh, between two and a half and three x and he's on the lower side of two and a half x uh... see bets the flop just calls here basically when sam just calls we don't most of the time we're not going to suspect that he has too many strong hands so we can perceive this as 
maybe a float that wants to take the, the pot from overcards on the turn. Uh, maybe um, a slow played over pair preflop. But, you know, we would expect that most draws would just assume that there's big enough, would just basically try and win the pot now by raising and committing themselves, raise calling or just shoving. Uh, and I think a lot of strong hands would want to raise for value and protection. And there's some strong hands that are a bit vulnerable here. I mean, I think sort of nines plus he would get on preflop, maybe aces, kings, he'd flat sometimes. Uh, if he had eights or sevens, maybe he wants to make a decision on this flop. Maybe if he has fives or threes, um, you know, I think he would, he would try and shove, you know, try and raise those hands, but maybe just call. Uh, anyway, so they go to the turn. All the money gets in, and we see the claimer had 7-6 with a 7 high flusher on the turn, but he was drawing dead to Sam's full house. So, I mean, an interesting hand there. I can see in the claimer's position that how he feels that it's really tough to put Sam on any sort of strong holding there when he just calls the flop, because you would think anything that he ha There are very few hands that he has that he feels like he can slow player that aren't vulnerable enough uh i think and and the claimer probably suspects that he's got something very weak or uh or a float and that he can probably get a lot of floats to fold by the turn uh so i can't fault him too much although i think the the preflop play is really questionable uh i think just fold here most of the time i'm not sure why you know it's really not a great spot uh the guy's not folding to three bets that much as we see here and 36% in this uh, second second number on the bottom line of the HUD. Uh, and added to that, let's see, is he raising buttons that much also? It's a bit off the screen. I'll bring it on here. So he's raising first one button, 32%. Also not a very high number relatively. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of aggressive opponents will be raising upwards of 50% from the button. So he's going to have strong hands there, I think, often enough. And he's just going to be taking too many flops uh, with hands that just by default will have, you know, will be, will have, he'll have combinations of bigger cards and basically more hands that dominate us, more hands that, that flop better than us on average. Uh, and just having the initiative isn't going to do us good enough. Not to mention the C-bet sizing, especially against the player who's not folding to three bets that much, it really doesn't discourage action. So, uh, let's see, I wanted to see at the beginning, there are about 30 big blinds deep now, or 30, to, he's got like 33 effective Sam on the button. If I'm 2.5xing this and getting 3 bet 3 handed um, by you know a reg who's probably capable of having some balance here, in this case we see he's 3 betting 14% from the big blind, uh, I'm just definitely shoving this all day. In fact, I'm, I feel good about shoving here because uh, there's a good chance that I can win the pot without showdown now, uh, as opposed to having had to play a pot with a hand that just doesn't flop very well. Uh, despite being in position with the initiative, so I would I would definitely advise shoving here preflop in Sam's spot, uh, and maybe the claimer knew something about Sam's game that he doesn't maybe doesn't understand four bet ranges or something like that because the fact that he's flatting sixes here, you know, the claimer is going to win in this spot. I think most of the time. I don't know how aggressively Sam intends to play this this hand after the flop, but. You know, for example, if the flop comes queen 5 4, if he's just planning to put his opponent on ace king and just go with it, or, you know, and call two streets or raise the flop or what. Um, so, some insight to that would help. And then we can, when we want to know that, we can look at how he reacts to three bets, uh, or sorry, how he reacts to c bets. He doesn't fold the c bets very much uh, in general, and he's only folded to one c bet out of three in the three bet pots. So, in general, I'm just like, not, I don't really want to get involved in this spot with the seven six, and I would just fold. Um, trying, trying to look for the justifications here and help you guys understand at least my thought process when I'm, uh, when I'm looking for these types of spots to three bet bluff. You're up in five six suited on the button. Cal checks uh, on this three card, over card three over card flop. I check back, turn a six, and he leads for 4,000. I elected to just fold. Played this hand pretty passively, and when I watched it just now, I don't... At first I sort of thought, well, I should definitely be c-betting the flop, and now that I've made a pair, I should definitely call the turn, but um, 
while it might be true that Cal's probably leading the turn a lot, uh, maybe with like anything that he, um, any like any two after I check the flop, uh, I still don't know. You know, most hands are going to have at least some equity against me. Um, and I think uh, too often I'll be paying off a value bet. His sizing makes it look like, you know, it doesn't look very bluffy to me. It looks like it sort of wants to just ensure to get a call from a weaker hand. Uh, and I don't really like bluffing here. Even if I improve, it's going to be a bit of thin value on the river. Um, though I guess it's maybe not a terrible spot to turn the hand into a bluff, especially if I do, like I said, suspect that he just wants to get called by a worse hand, but uh, it's just going to be hard. You know, I'm repping a very narrow range here, and I'm playing my hand so... Like, I'm repping sort of, like, sets and uh, two-pair, and there's not a lot of combinations of those hands that wouldn't have just bet the flop. So it's going to be hard in his eyes to think, you know, if he sees me as a as a regular, it's going to be hard for him to believe that I wouldn't have just bet the flop for value uh, with those hands and that I would take such a blatantly obvious line to represent such strength. Uh, I think it'll make him a bit suspicious, and he'll just probably call call with most of his bluff catchers. Uh, and that being said, so sometimes it's, it is good to check strong hands on the flop and uh, and bet it, you know, bet big, try and make it look bluffy against uh, the types of regs that are non-believers and like to call down. In any event, just decided to let it go here. Here I did decide to defend, uh, strong enough to defend, and. I think I don't really like turning the hand into a bluff here. I think that he'll flat with hands that dominate me, uh, like King Jack and Queen. Uh, King Queen. Uh, of course, he'll flat with some hands that I dominate, but um, basically, I just want to keep the pot a little bit smaller out of position, and you know, maybe keep in some hands that he dominates. And also, I, I now as I look at this hand, I actually plan to check raise specifically flops like this. Check raise or like check call. If it was maybe like king four four, I might just uh, check call and then if he checks back the turn, try to bet the river. Uh, I think it's a pretty solid way to like rep a king. Uh, works well on on dry a side textures even better. Uh, and here, I think I can, especially because it's a rainbow board, uh, I can rep enough feasibly. Like I can rep maybe a six five suited, maybe like king six or king five suited. Uh, even though at the time I wasn't probably wasn't defending that wide, and even now, mm, I don't know, it depends on the opponent, but versus a min raise, I might defend those hands some of the time. But also I can just be repping a, a strong king, king-queen or king-jack or something like that. Uh, and so I think I can feasibly check-raise here. Also given we know that Cal's raising so many buttons, we know that he's going to have tons of combos that he's just c-betting here. Uh, it's a good texture for c-betting and just, you know, probably happy to give up. So, and and of course, you know, if I am going to start, like, routinely check-raising flops, I'd prefer, I think, for the first one to be the one that uh, where I don't have it. Uh, and that'll set up, set, uh, that'll help set me up later to get more value. Uh, you know, the increased frequency that you are making a specific play, the less anybody's going to believe you for having a, a strong hand when you do that play. However, despite it being a good situation and all that, I did just check fold. And uh, and again, this is just a difference that you sort of learn over time or or just, you know, I'm sure this it'll come and go in waves, times that I decide to play a little bit tighter, the times that I want to peel more flops and try and steal more pots like this. But uh, in general, I think it's good to, always good to try and find more spots to get involved, more spots to win pots, and and uh, and basically develop the dynamic a bit. I gotta say, I'm almost embarrassed to show this hand, and I sort of don't want to, but uh, there is, I mean, there's some merit to the, the way that I played it. Basically, uh, Sam opens the button. I just decided to call, partly because the claimer is here with a, a stack that he might decide to squeeze, given how much money's now in the pot. Um, but you know he's got to he's got to know that I'm not folding, but he would still I think put it in with hands like ace with some kind of range like ace eight, maybe king jack suited, maybe king ten suited, uh, and who knows maybe any pair. Definitely uh, I would think fives plus. So basically I was thinking that if he's shoving, you know, 